All right, Eureka and Jean-Claude. You guys have strip clubs, male strip shows in Vegas and LA. Correct. How'd you get into that? Oh, uh, actually through production, through production. We did a movie called Chocolate City, took off. Um, and then we did a television show with Lifetime, right? Uh, with Vivica Fox, Tyson Beckford, and then we decided to take it on the road. And this has become a popular thing. It is hugely popular. It's not something I ever thought I was ever going to end up doing. Um, I thought I'd be a film producer for the rest of my life. Um, but yeah, it's taken on a life of its own. We see hundreds of women a weekend, and it's just insane. Pure mayhem. <laughs> So Jean-Claude, your, your clubs are open to everyone, but they're mainly African-American, is that right? Yeah, yeah, mainly uh, all of our dancers are, are African-American or black men, um, and our customers are primarily uh, black women. We get about maybe 15% maybe other um, Asian Pacific Islanders, white, but mainly um, black women. And how, do, how does a, a black club a black strip club differ than a than a white one? Do you think? Oh, it's it's a huge difference. It's a, it's a huge difference. Um, it's just a huge, uh, just another culture. The culture is so different, right? Yeah, I mean, when we first started this, um, you know, it was a world that I wasn't even familiar with. I I'd never, I don't even go to female strip clubs, so I, I don't, I don't, I didn't know that world existed um, until Magic Mike came out, and a good friend of mine called me up over at one of the studios, and he said, "Hey, look." We know you're into black filmmaking and you make it. What about doing a black version of Magic Mike? I said, well, actually, I don't know anything about the world. And I'm not really particularly interested. Um, and then the movie comes out, Magic Mike, and it's huge. It's, it's, it's tremendous. And, you know, as a filmmaker, I immediately thought, OK, let's start exploring this. So a friend of mine out here in Los Angeles took me to some underground uh, black male strip shows in the hood. And when I walked in there, it was, I mean, it was, it was in a very dangerous neighborhood, but, mm -hmm. but the, the, the culture was so palpable. It was these, these black women, some were doctors, lawyers, uh, nurses, uh, nurses and, school yep. teachers. I, it, but they came, some were in the VIP section with, uh, uh, uh suitcases with money Literally. For, for, yeah. for these guys. But what I found fascinating about the world was the, the sense of empowerment that these women had that I'd never seen before in a group of black women. Um, and that immediately struck me. It was their world, they controlled it. They, they were the architects of, and the designers of what was happening and their power you felt it. And me having grown around up, you know, I've got three sisters and, and a mom, obviously, um, you know, black women um, uh, tend to be, as far as their sexuality, a public display of their sexuality tend to be more tempered. Um, they grow up with sort of very strict uh, Judeo-Christian morality. And so um, this exhibition, this, this, this display, outwardly display of, uh, of sexual, whatever you want to call it, interest, freedom, freedom expression, yeah. was what really caught me. I said, I got to make a movie. I got to do this. And so we went back, sat down, we scripted, we put a script together. And um, I got a friend of mine who finances a lot of my movies. And he's like, he says, like, you know, how much would it cost to make this movie? I mean, Magic Mike was like, I don't know what it was, 40 million, 50 million. And I was like, you give me two million bucks, I'll make a good movie. So uh, he gave me the money, I went out, made the movie. We sold it before I was done filming to Paramount for five and a half million bucks. So it's always good as an independent filmmaker to be able to make a movie and then sell it before you, you don't have to go around shopping it. So anyway, uh, they bought the movie, movie comes out, takes off. It's got some really hot black guys in it, uh, Tyson Beckford, Michael Jai White, and some really big, big, sexy guys. Um, and then, um, and then we decided we were gonna create a live version of, of, of it and put it at, at some clubs here in, in LA. We did it, there were lines, literally. I mean, we, we were just, <laughs> I mean, the owner of the club came to me and said, excuse me, sir, we, we, 
you told us 300 people. It's 3,000. Oh, he said he told us like less than 100 people. <laughs> right, yeah, he was, and he was upset that we had more than that. There's 3,000 people out there, the lines all the way around the park. And, um, and uh, we knew we had something, that we had tapped into something. And um, then we decided to uh, do a Southern California tour. So we sold out and eventually went to Vegas. And when we got to Vegas, which had up to that point, they had uh, uh, Magic Mike. They had Thunder as a live show, Under. Thunder from Down Under, Chippendales. Chippendales. They mm -hmm. had, you know, those shows, but they were all white, predominantly white shows uh, to celebrate bachelorettes and, you know, different things. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we called up one of the biggest brokers out there and said, hey, we've got a show. Um, we'd love to bring it out here. Uh, will you guys represent us and sell tickets? And they were like, no, we're not going to, we're not. We're not interested. There isn't a market for this. I'm like, trust me, there's a market for this. There's hundreds of hundreds and thousands of black women that come to Vegas every year With looking nowhere for nowhere to go. With nowhere to go. So we we um, we push them, and eventually they uh, 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 took us on and started selling tickets. We sold out literally the first month mm -hmm. uh, that we're out there. We sold out every show. And they finally called us back in the office and said, look, we didn't know. We did not know that uh, there was such a hunger for this. And, and that is really what, what our show is. It's, it's a place where black women pr predominantly come to express themselves, feel free, have a great time, um, uh, uh, a comrade among each other. Uh, and... Um, we, we see it almost as, a, I say this to her every night, uh, we see it almost like a, it's a clinic uh, where uh, because of the, the black women and, and, you know, there's a whole tradition, whole history of, uh, you know, uh, black women being sexually exploited, black women, uh, whether you trace that all the way back to slavery and being used as almost sexual uh, cattle. Uh, to reproduce and create more slaves, et, et cetera, that um, their sexuality has been, for lack of a better word, suppressed in a lot of ways. And so um, church is really pushed really hard in the black, black home. And, um, and so we now see women ages 18 to 95 that come and it is such a beautiful thing to see because you know how much they've had to overcome to open up their minds to be here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we celebrate with them and, and the guys make them feel uh, beautiful and make them feel sexy and make them feel worthy. Um, and for the men, on the men's side, um, a lot of, uh, you know, we're also burdened as black men with some of those, those uh, sexual innuendos and sexual shackles. Um, and it is a, they are celebrated. It is a place where black men, their sexuality is no longer considered taboo. It's no longer something that's icky. It doesn't it, come across aggressive, scary, right. you know, just all of those negative all the connotations. All stigmas, that we're, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Eureka, what, what is it about the African-American community that makes this so popular? I mean, are the, are the women repressed, as, as Jean-Claude was kind of indicating? I do think we are, are uh, repressed to an extent. Um, and we're often, women in general, are often pinned against each other. You know, who looks better? Who's dating this guy? Who's, who's got their hair done? Or, you know, just there's always some sort of, we're always pinned against each other. And in in the Black Magic Live space, whenever you enter that theater, it's just, it's almost as if you just found a bunch of girlfriends or sisters, long lost sisters that you never knew. There is a sisterhood. You know, yeah. there is a sisterhood that's built there. And I think that's really what has made the show so popular, made our club so popular. Um, and of course, the interaction with the guys, the way the men carry themselves. Cause you know, like Jean-Claude said, we had went to a couple of strip clubs when we were in pre-production for Chocolate City. And strip clubs, there can be a dark, there's a little bit of a dark element there. And we worked really hard to sort of remove that from our show. Sort of keep it as fun, as sexy and pop and sort of mainstream. We've, we've really helped make 
the sexy black man mainstream a little bit when it comes to the Vegas stage. Um, and I think that's what it, I think that's what it's been. I think the fact that we've been pinned against each other and and just to be able to go somewhere and just be free and have fun, not be judged and and freely be able to post it on social media. Who gets to do that? I think that's really what has changed our space. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the, the men that you look for to, to get up on stage. So, you know, when we first got into this world, um, we were blind in terms of how we were navigating it because we had never done it before. And um, uh, our eyes quickly opened to the reality that this could be a very edgy, could be a very dangerous environment. Um, why? Principally, a lot of the guys are dancers or either felons, ex-felons, or either um, uh, drug, drug users. Um, you Extremely know, rough childhoods. Or gang members. Yeah. Uh, those are the guys that typically, I don't know about the white world, but definitely in the black male review space, those are the men who tend to gravitate towards that form of employment, largely because there are no other opportunities open to them, right? They have rap sheets, they whatever, you know. Um, so I had to navigate through that. We had to navigate through it. Um, you know, I'm from Brooklyn. So there is an element of me that, that is, you could say, street, whatever. But um, I'm able to detect where there could be potential danger, where, you know, the type of people I want to associate myself with. And so when we were putting this show together, there was a very, very keen eye uh, to extracting those elements that we did not, that, that was not consistent with a mainstream type of show. Right, because 95% of the people that come see our show, especially in Vegas, are tourists. And they're from everywhere. They're from all across the country. And there's a median age. The median age of ladies that attend black male strip shows is like 35. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are mature women. And they expect to come in a place that is safe, a place where they can celebrate without, you know, feeling, you know, any kind of, Predatory vibes. Yeah, predatory vibes or elements of danger. So we, we took a lot of time to make sure that we, we put together a show that was fun and a, yeah. and a safe environment. Mm -hmm. hmm, that sounds great. I'm sure that Vegas is a perfect market for what you're doing. Yeah, I don't think it gets any better than Vegas right now. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than Vegas. There's literally everyone sort of that comes through that door every type of woman comes through that door short tall skinny overweight you know we sick cancer uh um patients yeah. Yeah, yeah cancer survivors it's just literally we get um army women women who are in the military we get doctors uh just this past sunday you had a Two sheriffs in there. I don't know. What. <laughs> two sheriffs. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a, it's an environment that again, we're starting to see it open up. Women are starting to express themselves more sexually. Um, and when I say more sexually, it's not. I don't mean you know women are more uh, sexual. I mean they are they're, they're opening up their minds to expressing their desire to appreciate the male physique, the male. Uh, and, the, and the guy strips down to some briefs or something like that, right? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, right. Or like that. Yeah, well, our guys, those, we don't do the G strings. Yeah, we don't do the G strings <laughs> at our show. Our show goes as far as boxers, and even that is like one set for the. We again, we try to keep it um, um, as PG thirteen mm -hmm. as you can, because then you have a wider audience swath, the sure. larger audience mm. pool if you make it where guys are swinging their penis like like it's you know it's very banana small peels. Market. yeah it's, it's it becomes a little bit of a yeah. of a challenge and that there's, there's already a place for that there's tons of regular strip clubs that do that all night we yeah. don't need to yeah. yeah our show is pretty much a lot of it is is choreographed and and, and that was a challenge <laughs> you know you're getting guys from the hood guys from the streets <laughs> to learn dance moves and it's you know it's like oh. literally working with toddlers it's like two left feet two left legs till this day and, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to this day you know it's it's still a struggle there are weekly rehearsals and that's the other thing too you know we've created an environment you know again I, I you know I spoke to and Eureka spoke to how the women um, 
uh, the value of this to, to the women. For the men, I can't it's, tell you. It is, it is, it's beyond. we've watched these men literally grow and develop as mature citizens from, you know, even something as simple as, hey, we've got, we, we've got a meeting today at four o'clock and trying to get all these guys who are used to just very loose schedules and not, you know, they're not regimented that yeah. way and they're not programmed that way. Um, and so it's sort of a re-education in a lot of ways and getting these black men who otherwise, and I'd like to believe, maybe I'm blowing too much smoke up my own ass, but I'd like to believe that our show has helped save some lives. Um, no, be, it has, you know, it has. Yeah, that's great, that's great. What, what are the names of your clubs? Chocolate City um, and uh, Black Magic Live. These are both in Vegas? One's here in LA at the Savoy. We do it every uh, Thursday and Friday nights. And in Las Vegas, uh, Black Magic Live. Black Magic Live, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Mm. Yeah, that's where the, that's where the real uh, uh, money is. Yeah, excellent. Eureka, Jean-Claude, thank you so much for, <laughs> for telling us about these interesting clubs that we never knew about. Yeah. And uh, Hope you guys have a fun weekend. Yeah. Next time you're in Vegas, come on through. Maybe we'll put you on stage. Oh, yeah. Men are allowed, too. Men are allowed. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Husbands that's and wives a, come that's all a the question. time. We get, oh, we right? get, we yeah, get yeah, couples, couples all the time. All the time. Couples come in. I mean, I tell people all the time, you know, when I was younger, uh, I used to go to, you know, now it's all internet-based, but I used to go to clubs, you know, meet women. You know, you go to the bar and, hey, you want me to get a drink, blah, blah, blah. Um, if I knew about male review shows back then, <laughs> I'd never go to a club. I'd go to a male review yeah. show. I mean, there's literally 300 women there, yeah. all hot and bothered, hitting on everything with, everything. with, with testosterone walking by. <laughs> you know, our waiter gets hit on more than anybody. <laughs> the security guard, everyone. <laughs> everyone. Anyone can get it at that moment. It's so funny. You're just sharing a little so uh, fun for everybody, right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to see people just let loose, have fun, without getting into trouble afterwards. Normally, you go out, you get drunk. You do something outlandish and you're in trouble the next morning. <laughs> you know, you come over here to our show and it's just, you wake up with a clean slate. You're good. Yeah. You're good when you wake up. No regrets. Excellent. All right. Eureka, Sean, thank awesome. you so much. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mark. Thank you.